read on here. Okay, well, I'm doing a live broadcast again today. Um, got some couple of new computers. Well, new to me anyway. Um, let's see. I will show them to you here. Okay. Um, there's a front view. That is a Hewlett Packard HP. Um, and I'll show you the back view. Side view, back and side view. I'll take the side off in a minute. I haven't, I blow these out with the air blower to get all the dust out of them, but and I haven't showed the other one yet. It's down on the floor. But I haven't uh, started them up or anything yet. I got that one all hooked up. Let's see, I've already forgot. I've got some new camera. Okay, that's both ways of it. And uh, now I'm going to get on down here to my uh, handheld and I'll show you a little more about it. A little closer view. It's an HP seven Pavilion seventy nine sixty six. Uh, I believe it's a Celeron D. Uh, so it's a single. It's going to be a single core, and uh, pretty sure about that. Uh, especially since it has XP. Uh, insignia on the front but we'll see for sure but I think it's going to be a Celeron D sing single core that's what I remember and I couldn't read that tag just now either even probably you couldn't either now down here is let me get down a little closer now that's a gateway and uh, I think it's, you know, I'm not sure if it's a Celeron. It's uh, just a simple black case. And I, same thing with it. I blew it out, but I haven't uh, plugged, I haven't plugged this one in at all or anything. So that's what I'm going to do today is I'll start with the HP here. And uh, get over there and... Uh, I'll take the case cover off first, and then we'll see about. And when I go over there, I'm probably going to have to leave the mic. I can kind of drag it over that way, but I can't be right by it anyway because I'm using my SM58 on the on the stand, you know. Or on the, yeah, well, it's just... <clears throat> anyway, I tried it in my chair. So, um... I'll just have to kind of reach back and forth. Let's see. Yeah, let me go take the side off, and then maybe I'll get the uh, handheld again. Try bringing the microphone over this way. I'm going to have to hold the camera in one hand, the mic in the other, looks like. It starts falling. Let's see. What do we got in here? Okay, well, that's the Ethernet light because I tell them that the Ethernet's on. Uh, it's on board, I believe. And it has a video card right there. I'm plugged into it. It does not have an onboard video, which I guess was pretty common during this time. Really. You get a better machine that way because they all rave about all the onboard video capabilities that they have now, but they're not much. I haven't seen anything that's near as good as having a half decent, even a half decent dedicated video card just for normal watching video, YouTube videos and stuff. I'm not, I don't do games. I do. I would like to render and edit. I don't edit videos as much as I thought I ever would, but when I do, I want them to render. One of the reasons I don't do it is because takes so long for them to render. Types up my machine, and if I try to use one of my older machines, then it has to run for 12 to 24 hours to do the render, and, and I have to try to sleep with all that noise and heat, extra heat in here. So, um, and if one of these is better than what I've already got set up, then I'll use it for that, but the uh, best machine I've really got for, for doing that is the one I use all the time now that, uh, if I can really show it too good, it's right there. 
It's let me try from under here. Yeah, that's it. It's um, Lenovo I, Lenovo i5 quad core with four gig of RAM, two point five gigahertz. You can't see it very well. You can see the right side of it, but uh, it's what I'm using right now. But it only has two hundred and fifty six megabytes of onboard video memory, and that's where I run into all kinds of trouble. But it's still better than the older ones I have. But uh, so let's. Uh, I guess I will go change my switch over and then start it up because I can't do <laughs> look here this is what I have to do right this moment because that's hanging off the table there and see this is my stand I inverted it hung it upside down let me move see now it'll stay that's how I have it fixed up to where it'll stay there Works really well when I'm sitting here. In any other way, it doesn't. Uh, there we go. Doesn't work as well. I'll leave it like that while I'm doing this, and I'll plug this. I have to keep these phones plugged in. They would, see, I'm streaming my video from the phones with a app called IP Webcam. <coughs> and uh, but they run, eases the battery up pretty fast, <coughs> so I have to. Uh, I have to plug them in while I'm doing my stuff. Okay, let's turn it on. Uh, oh, I meant, to, well, I may have to clean the, uh, I've got a little CD that you can put liquid on it and clean the CD uh, laser eye. And um, if it needs it, I might do that before I put a regular CD in it. Sometimes you do that and it, it kind of gets it wet and it takes a while to dry, so sometimes it gives you more trouble than if you just left it alone. But uh, let's turn it on first and see what it does. It I don't know. It I know it won't run. Oh, well, it's beeping like it has. Thought it had bad memory or something for a minute. So, um, oh, I've got to switch my KVM switch so I can see. I have it on my KVM switch. I was like, why can't I see the monitor? Okay, now I don't know if it was going to give a signal or what. Um, leave it like that, and if I get a signal, then I'll switch. Oh, I can't switch. I guess the only way I'm going to... I'd have to be already pointed. I guess what I should do is point this right-hand camera over at the monitor. But I'm not getting a signal. Let's see, am I on the right one? I believe so. It sure is loud. I mean, I'm going to leave it on the monitor so I'll be able to tell. I don't believe we're getting a video signal. I didn't expect that. You don't usually have that problem. I have some old video card. I don't have anything really any good. A way older. What I have, I think, is way older than this machine. Let's see. Um, let me go back to my. Actually, no. I'm going to hard shut it down and I'll start it again. Well, yeah, let me go back. Okay. 
It almost sounds like, yeah, I'm having to reach up there and use a pencil to switch my KVM switch in case you're wondering what the heck I'm doing. But I, what I can do, oh, well, you can kind of see the monitor in the background. You can't see what's going on. I could aim this right-hand camera at the monitor. It'd probably be just as well because it's not doing much good. The way everything's set up in here, I can't get one, you know, like in the middle of my keyboard here. can't put it there, so kind of trade off as to what will work. Let me, uh, it's so loud it almost sounds like the fan's hitting something, and I had that apart and blew it out real good, so should be okay, but maybe when I took that apart and put it back together, I got something in a little bit in the wrong place. It's possible. Um, but here, I'm going to try this. I'm going to aim this uh, right-hand camera at the screen. Let me get it out here. And uh, it's going to be crooked, but it'll work. I mean, I've done it before. Let's see. You can kind of tell what's going on that way, you know. Let's see. It looks further away than I remembered. I guess what I did was put the dr put it up there closer. Move my drinks, I guess. And I debated about doing that to start with, and then I decided against it. Now I'm thinking that was what I should have done. I see that kind of makes the angle more severe, though, doesn't it? Well, at least it's closer. Okay, so I don't know what's better. It's such an bad. I think out here was really better. It's small, but it doesn't look as severe. Or does it? I guess closer is better, even if it's at an angle. That's why I don't really ever do it this way much. Yeah, out here is better. I can't use the zoom on the cameras, by the way, because it, uh, I think right there is about as good as I'm going to get it. Because it uh, it gets so grainy, you can't make anything out. So I'm going to do it like that. And uh, I think I can just put my drink back in its place. Yeah, the only time you'd see it is if I'm getting a drink. So... Trying to put my that's my coffee in the smaller big red cup. <clears throat> okay. Um, now what I think I'll do is shut it down. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'll leave it here, and then I'm gonna hard shut it down, and I'll have I'll be looking at the uh, monitor feed out of the uh, out of the computer. Well, it takes seems like a lot longer than four seconds to shut down. Before I turn it, I think before I even turn it back on, I'm gonna look and see if there's maybe, maybe that there's something wrong with that fan or something. But we look that over, and uh, I'll just leave it on that view because if I try to use the handheld, I won't be able to use my hands to do anything. So uh, put my little neck pillow up there, I guess, out of the way. Okay, what? Well, yeah. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat>
Turned it back on without the... Uh, boy, it makes noise in my speakers. Yeah, it's just something really noisy about that. Uh, still don't get anything on the video. Something really noisy about that uh, fan. But it's not hitting anything. Let me look at it. Okay, well, um, I guess I could have, could have left it, oh yeah, see if I don't, uh, hmm, yeah, I have to, uh, I have to switch over to that machine or you can't see on the camera what's going on, so I did that, so you did see that it was black the whole time, okay, that's what I want. Uh, it's pretty loud, but it's it spins really freely. I took the the little shroud that directs the air around to the uh, right up in there. Oh, I guess you can probably can't see my mouse. Okay, because uh, I'm not doing desktop anyway. Up around the sh there was a shroud. You can probably see that it's not there. It was a big old beigeish white thing, but it is the CPU fan that's making all that noise. Don't know why I don't get video. That's pretty odd. Usually, you, you know, even if it won't boot, you get the BIOS or something. Something like that happened on... I had a, two old PM3s out in the garage. That I, I did some videos on them the other day. I powered them up out there. One of them wasn't giving any video until I got the... had two hard drives. One was going bad, and the other one was actually a 250 gigabyte. And I don't, the BIOS, for one thing, I don't think the BIOS could even read that. It, I don't know if it would read it at all. Anyway, after I messed around with the jumpers on the hard drives, it actually started throwing up video so uh may not be the card um yeah you don't know what someone else has done to it you know uh, trying to fix it or whatever so uh i think i will lay it over on its side look at the jumpers on the hard drive and i might take that uh, heat sink loose i didn't take it loose i just blew out the fan on this one take it loose and kind of look that over let's see so, what will this give me? That gives me this. Oh, yeah, if I read it, it tells me. Both 1 and 2. That's what I'm on right now. I might want to just do that. See, and that would be, yeah, okay. Let's leave it like that. And I think, I mean, it doesn't matter if I aim, you know, from right and left at the same time. You're not going to see anymore, really. And if I don't lay it over, I can't... Uh, really do anything much with it. I mean, I can leave it like that for a while. Probably nearly. Yeah, I did. I think when I was over there, I wasn't paying enough attention. I was, I've got that other camera sitting on the bed. It looks like it's a lot closer to the edge than it was a while ago. Yeah, well, I guess it didn't move any. I'll leave it like this, turn it back off, and uh, probably to take the heat sink off, I'll need to lay it over. Okay. Oh, I think it might be set to instant off. That's why it's not acting right. Oh, now the hard drive's making noise. Yeah, it's set to instant off. That's why it wasn't doing what I expected. I always set them to four-second delay. I'm going to try to bring my mic over here with me. I want to 
be able to uh, it just doesn't work good <laughs> I want to be able to make a comment here or there let's see maybe I'll get me something to hold it up there now you can kind of lean over That hard drive has got uh, some kind of, I don't know if you can see it really, but there's some kind of uh, plastic ring, big ring of a thing. I think it's so you can pull the uh, IDE cable off. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I think so, but I'm going <coughs> to get the power off. I have to lay it down to see the jumpers. I've got me some C those CDs over there in case I wanted to try to boot it up to CD, but I'm not that far along yet. Go ahead and unplug the power so that I don't make anything worse. Now I have to get up. Look at how rusty that got right there. I don't, that's not no, very usual. What in the world would I made that get? It's almost like it had acid on it or something. Nothing else is damaged, but right there. A lot of the hard drives are labeled right here on the bottom. Is it'll have you know MS Master Slave P for uh, Park. I think no, not Park. Cable Select. Anyway, there's f usually four letters on there, but they're not on this one. It's usually printed onto the circuit board, but the letters are on top. But uh, most every brand is a little different, so I'm gonna have to get it to where I can see the letters. That's nice. Got the whole carriage, hard drive carriage comes out like that. I think there's only one screw in the uh, hard drive, so maybe I can get it out where I can read it. Sometimes you can read them by peeking in there, but not this one. Found another screw hiding up at the front. Okay. 
see what we got here. Okay, it's a Seagate ST38002A. It's an 80 gigabyte. Okay. Yeah, here's the uh, layout. It's on one, two, three, third from the power plug. Let's see how they got it marked out. They always have it marked out in a way that makes it a little harder. Okay. Yeah, one and two limit. I don't know why anybody would want to limit to 32 gigabytes, but that's on all of them. And then uh, that's the closest one to the power plug. It's on number. They're at, kind of have it numbered really strange but anyway the one that's on third one over from the power plug that is enable cable select which is normal for a lot of machines and then master or single drive it's the farthest one away uh, all the way uh, the jumper all the way off is driving slave mode Okay, and then master, and then if you have two jumpers on the la uh, the last two or the first two, depending on which way you count, uh, it's actually numbered one, three, five, seven, and above, and then the bottom. Or these are the pin numbers, I guess. Two, four, six, eight. It's sort of like the firing order on a Chevy. So, so uh, only they're backwards. So anyway, that's uh, for Chevy three fifty. But anyway, if they're both of them on the far left, that would be master with a non-ATA compatible slave. So it's on cable select, which is probably it. There's not another drive in there to conflict with it. Also, a floppy in a floppy in a DVD or a CD drive. Actually, I think it has both. Yeah, sure does. So that that can cause some trouble, uh, especially when cable select mode. But I, I usually if they're, you know, unless somebody did that, usually if they're in cable slick for, and they haven't been changed, and that's the way it belongs. Uh, you go to, I think I'll look down the motherboard, make sure these things are plugged in right down there. It's something I never really ran into much. You know, usually they'll post to and show you something, whether the hard drive's in there. I don't really remember seeing that, but it happened just yeah, last week, so I'm, that's why I'm looking at this right now. But, uh, yeah, I'll kind of look around at that other stuff next before I, before I uh, move any of these or anything. Okay, let's see. Well, the uh, IDE cable there is actually labeled, and it says that the one on the end is master and the one in the middle is slave. I believe it was on that one. I think it was. <coughs> and it says master. <coughs> Don't really remember for sure now. But the uh, they're plugged into the motherboard the way I would do it. So uh, the uh, hard drive's on the primary, and the, and the CDs are in the secondary, which I think... A lot of computers used to come out of the factory just the opposite, but they didn't work right. They didn't boot the way I wanted them to, and I wanted to. Uh, I didn't like that. So a lot of times they would get hung, wanting looking for a c c DVD or a CD. So I'm gonna leave it like it is.
went ahead and put it on the master just just to see there's no other hard drive in it so can't hurt anything right now thing is if i change it and then later i forgot i did that it might cause me trouble later but uh that's got all kinds of rubber padding on it and everything different different
they're two identical 256 megabyte uh, memory sticks, and so I'm swapping their places just you know way, just in case. You know, one wasn't no the one in dim. They were in the right so sockets. This one's labeled dim one, two, and three instead of O. A lot of them are O and one and two. Uh, but 133 megahertz. MT is the brand. Okay, big M is a logo. So I'll put this one in there. Well, I was thinking I would put the, uh, hang on, oh. trying to keep that out of the way, but I'm getting tired of going way over there to talk and bending way down. Um, I was thinking I would put the hard drive deal back in, but if I do, then I can't get to anything else. So I'm going to leave it out. I was wanting to turn it back up, but I'll just leave it down here like this. And I want to take that heat sink deal off of there. See, I put it back in there. Yeah, I got to put it back on my other place on my KVM switch. Makes it a little more complicated because I can't see what I'm showing. Uh, you know, the, I, I'm switching to a different computer. I have four computers hooked up to that KVM switch. So when I switch back to this one, I can't see where I've got my switches or anything. I'll just, let's see, I got to put it back on the, where I can see, y'all can see the screen and the, both the screen and the computer. That's what I'll do. Uh, and then I'll boot it up again, but let's see. Well, I know there's something wrong there with that fan, so I'm going to take that loose first, that uh, heat sink. But, uh, but, you know, I mean, the fan's on top of it, and it spins okay. Okay, so there's hardly any heat sink paste left on it. It needed it bad. I don't have very much. I ordered some, but, but I wanted to get the $2 one instead of the $7 one, and same about amount <laughs> inside the tube, <laughs> but the one that $2 comes from China, and it's not going to be here till end of July or middle, 15th of August. So I thought, well, I'll probably be all right. I think this is, I got enough for right now. I just won't scrape any of it off. I'll just add a little bit. But... <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with the fan and why it's 
there's a big delay between what I do and when you see it, so it's kind of hard. But I don't see why why it's making so much noise. There's nothing in the fan. I uh, one of these and yeah, one of those other ones, I think it was. The f one of the blades in the fan, the heat seek fan, was actually broken hanging it up. But I, got, I saw that and took it out. Because uh, when I was spinning, you know, when I blow it, it spins the fans when I blow it with my air blower. And uh, wasn't this one, it's not missing any. And I, I'd fix that one up. I, I don't know if it was this gateway here or one of those other old PDM 3s. But anyway, uh, I really don't know why it's making noise. It may be, uh, I could take it off, but take it off. I guess I will now that I've got it this far apart. Why not, right? Okay, let's see. Oh, I don't want to lay the heat sink down anyway. I'm trying to put it to work. that or something. Let me get a marker. Now that it's marked, can we add? Now that it's marked, I'll know which way to put it back. So that the cable is goes to work towards the plug, you know, they're not very long. That one's actually been a little knot tied in it to probably keep it out of the way of things. I think I'll untie it because it seemed to me it was just keeping it closer to the fan. I kept looking at it going, is that what's doing it? It's awful close. It wasn't. It wasn't on top. But that way I can put it up wherever I want. Well, that thing was so filthy that no amount of blowing, I mean, I really went after these things. No amount of blowing was going to clean that off. Oh, <laughs> I was hearing a noise. Yeah, I think the fan itself is all right, but, and I'm not even touching that, so, uh, I'm taking this back. I've got air compressor in the garage. I'm taking it back out there. <laughs> this is going to be kind of crazy, but what the heck. Uh, I'm going to grab my do a little experiment. I'm going to grab my handheld cam. I won't have any audio when I go out there. I tried to set that, make it like do audio from the mic and the camera at the same time, and it, well, it made my computer fill up. Uh, I have four gig of memory. It was three and three and a half gig in just a matter of a minute. So. Uh, and I wasn't sure I was ever getting, you know, both audio feeds either. So uh, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to carry you out there. And I've had my heat sink paste with what I've got left right there and blow this out. And just be silent until then. But i got to go over here and switch. Let's just do that. Won't be silent while I'm moving the mic around, though, will it? Okay, so. I'll switch to handheld. What have I got going over here? Uh, it did something, but I think it's okay. Let's uh, switch to it and see what we got. Okay. Now, and before I go outside, I'll go ahead and switch my. I'll switch my desktop first, and uh, I want to check on my feed. <laughs> I go outside. I'd like to check and make sure it's working, and also, you know, if somebody tried to chat with me or something, I don't, I don't want to be completely rude. I mean, usually they take off before I figure it out. It's another thing I can't leave my. This machine's not powerful enough, and this stupid YouTube page uses too much memory anyway. But uh, I can't go on any YouTube page while I'm doing this. OBS uses enough. Like here we are. It's not that bad, but not bad on memory at all, 440 megabytes, but it uses 22% to 26 generally of uh, CPU. <coughs> and that's total of all four cores, you know, like an average. And uh, 
Firefox is fine right now, but as soon as I go to YouTube page, it's only 323 megabytes, and it'll go up and use some processing power too. When, but when I go to my uh, live dashboard page, I think it may be worse than a regular viewing page, but either one will, if I leave it there, it will fill up. Even if I stop the feed from playing, it'll still uh, sit there and use up my memory. I've tried every way. But I can look, in case okay, there's what I was doing a minute ago. I'll pause it. Okay. It's a good stream, good health. Nobody is uh, talking to me. Let's see, say something. Can't type. C H E C K N. Okay, my hands are dirty and I don't like touching my keyboard. There we go. Okay, so now here's what I'll I have to shut this down here to keep from using up. Oh, I was going to show. Didn't really get to show. It was up to 573 by the time I got over there. It was probably about 600 and something, but it'll just steadily climb as a thing. And once it gets up to one gig, it holds, brings this computer pretty much to a halt when I'm trying to do all this at once. So um, go to Cam 3. Take that fan. So I guess if you're going to blow out a really dirty computer that someone gives you, you better go ahead and take the heat sink completely off every time. I did it on that other one that was with the broken one of the other ones, and and it was, I could see that it, it wasn't getting clean, so I took it off. And probably the one with the broken fan is the one I did it to. But anyway, oh, I know which one it was, my IBM server. I wanted to be really uh, thorough with it because it's my server that runs all the time. And it's back to being really quiet again. It was getting loud and driving me crazy for about a month or more. <coughs> so anyway, here we go. We're back on handheld cam, and it doesn't have any audio. The audio comes from my mic in, in the house here, but I'm going out in the garage. Take that with me and blow it out. You'll be glad you don't hear the air compressor anyway.
Okay, now, I don't know if this, uh, you know, the wireless worked all the way in the garage lot. It was more my, my experiment, more most of all. Hopefully it did. But, I, I mean, it spins about the same as it did. But I, I found out that the best thing to put in these, electric, uh, these electrical fans is that uh, something like that CRC electrical cleaner, the contact cleaner is what it really is. But it helps clean the uh, bushings. They get uh, gooey. And I used to put, I tried out uh, lithium, white lithium grease. I thought that would be good. But that stuff gets hard and gooier than, gooier than axle grease. When, and wheel bearing grease, I mean. We used to call it axle grease, but not in any weight that you put in your differential, but wheel bearing grease, the really gooey stuff. It gets harder than that junk when it uh, gets very quickly, in a couple of months. It messed up more of my fans and stuff. It said it was safe for, you know, I wonder if that stuff's a lot like this right here. It looks just like it. Anyway, uh, I wouldn't use it because it dries up and gets hard. You know, and you want something that's going to stay. Oh, well, I was, okay. I marked this, but I didn't mark the fan itself. But I do remember, <laughs> I do remember that the, the cord was on that side. So I'll still be all right. So let me switch <coughs> back over. To the one that, let's see, which one is it? Not that one. That one. That's the one pointing at my, at the computer. And even, I was going to try to leave it, I can't leave it laying up. I don't, I mean, I might could have figured out a way to put a camera up high looking down in it, but I didn't think about that ahead of time. And I'm not going to keep re-aiming cameras in the middle of my live video, so... Anyway, hopefully the, the video came out. If that works, that'll tell me a lot because I've been wanting to, been thinking about trying to, instead of just carrying one camera out there and setting it down, well, the only thing is I wouldn't get, if I can't stream the audio and the video, it won't work. But, you know, I could take all, I could set up three cameras out there and work on my, the next thing I'm going to do is work on my truck when next time I can get out there early in the morning. It's too hot, and then, you know, from noon on, from two on, it's too hot. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'd like to do that and just use OBS to stream it live, you know, and then I don't have to worry about uploading them later and all that stuff. Uh, so, and I uh, wish I had a wireless microphone, but I don't. But I've uh, been thinking about ways to use some old uh, wireless house phones to do that, but their batteries only last 20 minutes. Some of them, one of them 10 minutes. That's when we got some new ones. <laughs> had to buy new batteries, and I don't think 30 minutes, 45 minutes, probably the tops, and that's not long enough. Uh, I don't know if the my biggest problem of streaming from the cameras is the uh, network bandwidth is not enough. And you'll see if you ever see my face, you'll see I'm way behind. What's and I was telling you know the, the uh, video is behind my audio of coming from my mic. That my mic's straight into the computer, you know, and so the video is way behind it being in it streaming and everything like that, and all the all the lag that it gets. So anyway, let's get back to work. <coughs> Gotta have a drink. See, you just saw me uh, pick it up, and I just set it back down. I already had my drink. So that's the kind of lag I'm dealing with. I've tried resetting them all different ways. And I haven't found anything that will act just really work. Let me put this mic back so that I can talk to it a little bit. Okay, i get myself back in the picture here. And... Yeah, and that's probably what that noise was from, most likely. Let's see. Yeah, I think the dirtiest side was the one that was, yeah. The dirtiest side was the one. Where's my mark? Okay, there's my mark. I'm waiting for it to come around. Uh, and, yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, because I remember that the fan looked really dirty. Okay. It's just enough to get on your fingers, so I think if I just add a little, it'll, it will still do its job. I used to think that stuff was super particular, but I figure now that it's not. The main thing is if it's not dried up, um, when it, on our laptops, it'll just get crusty dried up. They get so hot inside. And... Uh,
then they'll overheat and shut themselves down. If you keep on fighting it, whoops, I just laid it down. Lost some of it. Dad, gum it. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, it's gooier than I thought it was. Well, I found out it's gooier than I thought it was. But I, I didn't want to get it dirty. I even blew it off out there to make sure I didn't have any dust on it. But uh, I better just hold it up here. Have it. And if I had this shoved out of the way, I could be right there in front and still be at the mic. I like being near the mic so that when I'm, I can talk as a work. So I guess I'll just hold it up here, even though you can't see it. I mean, you know how to put screws and stuff. Everybody knows how to do that. Only thing I'm really showing is kind of maybe, hopefully, what it takes to get this thing working again. I don't know about that video card. I noticed that I could... I didn't think I was going to get that first. I didn't mention it a while ago because I, well, I wasn't on the mic, but the uh, I didn't think I was going to get that first uh, memory dim out because it wouldn't open up all the way because of the memory card is in the way. It's an AGP memory card, and it's really long, and it's sticking out in front of it. It's only one slot, too. It couldn't go anywhere else. Of course, it just depends on the brand as to exactly how they're made, but it may be a bad card. This one could have been in a lightning strike or something, you know. I mean, they don't, people don't, okay, these are old, but still, my friend that gave them to me, probably somebody gave them to him because it didn't work right, you know. And usually it's just the operating system's got viruses or something simple like that, but sometimes it's a hardware related. So let me look up in there. So I'll give you the once over inside. Let me get up. I have to, no, let's see. Yeah, let me get up. I saw that bent, and I thought, oh, that's nothing. That's just a bent heat sink. That's not a heat sink. Those are some pins to plug in a, a header, a header pin to put a header to plug in something like a, probably an extra uh, uh, cable. I can't say the right words. Uh, IDE cable or something. A lot of, a lot of some of these cards have cable things like that that you can plug in. So I got to try. That may be shorting it out. It could have ruined it, or maybe it's just why it won't post any video. I'm gonna straighten that out and. Uh, See if that straightens it up. I was fixing. I was going to say I'm going to take that out and inspect it, but that may be what it is. So uh, let me kind of look it over. That helps me see. Matter of fact, since I can't fit down in there, this phone can. I do that with my magnifying glasses a lot. But if there's enough light, I know that's pretty bad, but.
So, how about that? I bet you that's what it was. I bet you those pins were shortened on each other. Those two front ones were bent pretty badly, and the top one was touching the one next to it. That's, you know, unless they were both grounds, it's going to be a problem. So, uh, hopefully, maybe we'll get some video. So, I'm going to put it back together now, put a little heat sink paste on it, and see if we can get uh, some video out of this thing. Uh, let's see. Tended to move one of those other cameras and set it up there. I guess it wouldn't be a big deal. That one that I moved to, towards the monitor. Of course, we're just about ready to use it now, but this one over here. The one that's on the bed's kind of harder to aim. I think I'd leave it alone. But like, it's not, well, today it is. It's not necessarily hard to aim, but that one. I think it would make it. Probably wouldn't show. It's not tall enough. Uh. But I kind of would like, I always like it when I'm watching videos to see exactly what the person's doing, you know. I guess the one on the bed, I could do it. It's taller. It's also harder to fit in that spot over there. Yeah, it's the one, the only one that would really work. Okay. All right, while I'm thinking. Okay. Okay, now that's where I'm going to put the heat sink back in. So, and then I'll leave that hard drive out until I get that done. Okay, got my heat sink paste. Actually, my old friend that gave me these computers gave me this. I had some and I'd run out, and he was up at Fry's Electronics. It was one of these. It's an electronics store that's over about almost 60 miles from my house. but And he used to live next door to me back then. But anyway, he was out there, and he got this. Paid a dollar for it, which was not a lot of money, but it was kind of high for a small amount like that. But... I, I, so I make it last. But anyway, I ordered like four ounces or something. Okay, let's put some on here.
believe I got it. Pretty tricky in my hand. Okay, got that back on. Now I'm gonna put the hard drive cage back in.
Okay, I'm gonna plug it up and boot it up light on its side there. And see if we get any video out of it. Put some of those tools back so they won't be in the way. And yeah, before I put this, oops, this little vent, that's kind of, that's the way it goes. See, it blows, it catches the air off the, uh, I guess the CPU fan blowing out. A lot of times they blow in, but if it's not, they're fighting each other. I guess I'll check that because it's CPU, and this, with this thing on there, the CPU fan should be blowing out. And then the case fan should be blowing out. So if they're not right, then they'll be fighting each other. So I'll look at that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty tight in there. Can't see it all right now, but those cables. But the, uh, they're not in the way of that, so that's the main thing. As long as they're not covering the where the air really needs to move. Okay, so one little paper towel is really getting dirty. Okay, now let's get back over here at the... Or I can see, switch over to the, you know, to show the monitor. <coughs> I usually don't move my mic at all. I'm, that's just going to make a lot of noise. Oh, I gotta move that camera. Well, I'll do this first, but I gotta plug that, move it back where I can plug it in. Uh, they'll run, you know, on the batteries, but not for a long time. But I got a picture right now, so we're good there. Let's put it on. Yeah. No, not desktop. Uh, one and two. Oh, I don't have camera one. And, yeah, one and two. Okay. So one's aiming at my monitor, and one's aiming at the machine right there. You can see that fan spinning that's good enough and uh, could move it a little more could okay and you can see both fans and I can see them too but now I gotta switch I just thought it's been a while since I've checked my live stream. Let me check it before I before I go off and uh, I'll just leave it like that though. Uh, I'm gonna check, be checking my live stream uh, before I go off and cons and consider everything still working. Uh, you know, it could be not working. Because it is going to be a pretty long live stream. Oh, it's so hot outside that it feels warm in here. It's only 84 now. It was 95 or even higher this afternoon. It's not really warm in here. Actually, if that's right, it says it's... I've got an indoor outdoor antenna. Yeah, 78. It says 84 in Fort Worth. And out here in, at my window, it's 78.8. But it just feels hot, especially when I was out there blowing that off. It felt hot and steamy out there. I don't think you can see it, but a little white cat that likes to come in our garage sometimes. The neighbor's cat keeps sneaking in there. I don't know why. She, I guess it was cooler. She went somewhere. She used to go in the attic. We used to have an actual air leak, and it was cool air coming out in there from the air conditioner. But we supposedly have that fixed. But anyway, uh, live stream is good hour and 25 minutes nice and long as usual for me i like to at least break them up if i'm but i didn't want to stop it's the same subject and everything and it just takes more time to stop and start so i didn't so i guess if anybody wanted to watch it they can skip through that's what i do if they're really long but i like like the basic subject <laughs> okay so yeah that'll give a view of the monitor and the machine as it starts up so let me switch over so that uh I will be able to be showing that. I'll we'll both see the monitor coming from the uh, HP over there. Okay. Now, 
just threw my multimeter in the floor trying to throw it over on the bed. Let's not do that. Okay, at least it's in the box. I like having the sound plugged in, but I don't like that noise it makes. Okay, we're not getting anything yet. Of course, sometimes it takes a little bit. I'm going to move over there where I can see what's going on. I'm going to turn my chair over. Hang on. I was going to say, it looks like maybe the video card is bad. It might have got blown out from that short of those pins. I might have one that I can... I don't know if, if I have one that's not in a machine. I've got some AGPs. <laughs> Actually, one of those uh, Pentium 3s in the garage that aren't really good for much have it. One of them had an AGP in it that I think said... One of them said 64 megabyte, oh, in the BIOS, 64 megabyte memory, but it might have been onboard. Uh, if it's an AGP, I could put it in here. I mean, I've got a couple right here in my tool case here, so let's see. I don't believe we're going to get any video unless there's some kind of error. Like, I don't have a PS2 keyboard plugged in, a mouse or keyboard plugged into it. But, but did it beep? It, I wouldn't pay no attention this time. Turn it off and it didn't go off. Okay, you got a little slower. Let's see if it does a beep. Yeah, it's not doing a beep anymore, and it was at first. So, you know, it's always a possibility that it, uh, it without a USB mouse and keyboard, it won't act right. Cause, I mean, a K PS2. I just have my USB plugged in from my... Uh, usually you're going to get something on the screen, though. Huh. Well, the video card is the thing that looks like it could be something wrong. So I'm going to take it out, look it over a little better before I go any further. Damn it. It's the trickiest thing to turn off I've ever seen. Definitely, if I can ever get it going and get in the BIOS, I will change it to that four-second delay. That always works better. Okay, um, get off that. Okay, now, we'll get off that. Uh, and one... Let's see, I'll leave that one right camera, my right hand camera pointing, and just move that one back where I can see the box. I can stand it up in a minute.
Okay, I think I'm pretty much back. I just realized uh, I don't, you probably might hear us heard some background talking a while ago. My mom popped in the door and said, "Did you open the garage door?" And I go, "Yeah." And I thought she meant a while ago when I went out, and I just now realized I had that garage door thing, uh, remote garage door opener in my pocket. So uh, I may have uh, just opened it all the way. I, I may have butt opened it. I did it the other day, and I was standing under it, and, but the emergency thing stopped it. It scared me to death. Let's go out there and see. I'll get my third eye camera. Let's go. Be silent, though. using it when I was working on it. Ah. Sorry, I got hung up talking about all that. Okay, so it was shut, and she didn't know. She didn't shut it. So anyway, I may have shut it with, uh, I may have shut it with that in my pocket. It happened, like I said, it happened to me the other day. I had it, once I had it in my pocket, and I sat on it, and another time I had it in my hand, and I and I and my finger, my I, I went meant to shut it, but I really didn't mean to do it right then. And then I was walking and I was close to the door, and then I bounced by accident and <laughs> made it go up and down. So anyway, you shouldn't let uh, kids have toys like these aren't toys; these aren't for kids. So. <laughs> these are those are for our supervised use only, and I'm, I need supervision. So, uh, let's see. Let's get back on whichever camera it was. There we go. Now, I'm going to take that video card out. And I guess I'll move my mic over this way again so that I can comment here and there. But uh, if I can, I'll stand this thing up. Yeah, I can probably get it out easier with it stood up. Unplug it so that nothing happens. It's no fun if it comes on while you're working on it. Okay, you take that video thing out of there. And I, don't know if, I hope, I mean, I, I hope I figure it out, but I also, there's a the weirdest thing. There's a cable. You might have seen it a little, looks like it's just a regular audio cable, and it comes out of the, from above the video card off the motherboard. I'm going to give a look at it. It's got a weird picture, like a speaker, I guess. It's really hard to tell what it means, what it's supposed to mean. I guess it's another audio out. It's like a speaker out. Sort of almost looks like a picture of a cone of a speaker, you know. Not sure, really. Everything is getting in my way. I usually have a little bottle. I don't got stuff in it. I don't like just laying my screws around where they get lost. I put them in a bottle usually or somewhere where I can't knock them around. There, put it up there. Now, oh, and I've got it turned towards me. Wasn't thinking. Let's see. Probably like that. I have to wait for the wait for the delay. It's an AGP, so they got little catches on them somewhere. Yeah, 
Yep, it's got a little clip back there you gotta push. Okay, let me look it over. It's an Azus video card, 32 megabytes. Not the worst from back then. And it's just VGA, that's it. You wouldn't really be able to tell by looking at it, most likely, if you know, even if it got shorted out, it would short out some component in there. And those things are just dang near, might as well be microscopic to me. So, I uh, guess I'm not holding it in a very good place, but I'm trying to look at it. Used to, you could look at stuff and see if there was some burnt trace or burned out component. You can still see if you got bad caps most of the time. But a lot of the time. I don't know about most of the time. It's got a little heat sink on it that comes off. No fan, but a heat sink. It wouldn't need a fan back in those days. It says TV mode. Some of them, even though they're VGAs, you can run a TV signal out of VGA and then use a converter. That was common. I think I have a card that will do that. It also has an S-Video on it, too, and a RF. I think it's the one. But uh, those are all in something, and I'm not going to take another machine apart. At least not right now. The ones that have that in it are behind this table down in that rack. But I do have something, and I have popped it in a machine before just to see if I could get a signal. I'll put this somewhere. It's dirty, and I don't want to put... That is my bed over there to the left, and I don't want to put dirty stuff on it. But I just put it over here behind my keyboard. As long as I don't shove the keyboard around, let me give one more look at that. I straightened that pin out pretty bad, pretty good. It was the last one on the end here. Pins one and two is what it was. They're numbered. But I'm not sure what that's for. Since just a VGA card, I don't really know what. I've seen, I've seen them that'll have, you know, when they're combo cards, they'll have all kinds of stuff that you can. Sometimes you can hook another hard drive up to them and stuff. But usually that's not a. I don't really remember a video card. Of sound cards that are like that, but. Okay, I gotta get my tool rack out of here. And let's look for a car. There's a yeah, there's a VGA card. Actually, that's a, not a VGA. That's a, that is SCSI. That's a SCSI card out of an old computer that was a, had a SCSI hard drive in it. And I don't think there's any video on this. It's no, that's an ISA card. Anyway, and it's a. But you can't see now. This is what I was talking about. You can put a hard drive or a yeah hard drive on that. And then it has a serial port, and I uh, can't remember. I don't really need to. That doesn't say. But anyway, I always forget. Yeah, there's one on this computer, too. I guess that was where you put the printer before they went to USB. Uh, COM port, I guess, is what it'd be called. Another, yeah, there's a VGA card. Let's see. This one's pretty old, I think. I've got some notes in there. Need to find the right driver for the this video card. Oh, it's an OTI VGA. Infinity. Serial number. Okay, I'll take one of those. So that's a possibility. But it probably works sometimes and not other times. 
And then since I don't even know if the operating system works. Oh, that's not video. That's one of those audio. That's kind of a game card. It's got audio and video. I mean, audio and game controller. Those are modems. So I'm going to leave that one out because I may not, I may only have that one. Look on the other side here and see what's in there. I think it's mostly just modems and and there's a there's an Ethernet cut card. It doesn't have a note on it, so I guess it works. Okay. Just gonna see if it was a real tick. I've been trying to remember. I haven't dug in here in a long time. Three com, yeah. Okay, so uh Oh, there's one of those big cables. <coughs> it's an IDE. <coughs> it's an old one. It goes to one of those cards. Actually, that's not an IDE. That's a. That is the uh, SCSI co uh, cable. Or that SCSI hard drive, which I guess it may be. I don't know. The, are SCSI hard drives IDE in interface too or not? I don't remember. I hooked that up and it worked. I hooked it up in uh, a couple of different machines. It was really small. It was like, I mean, it was like, well, small in today's standards. I think it was either big for back then. I think it was like two gigabytes or something. Can't remember now. Maybe it was just 200 megabytes. I don't remember. Pretty old machine. I remember that. But those are all modes. So none of that's going to do any good. I have a lot. I have. A few modems that worked. I had several, you know, most of these are like 14 Fords and stuff, but I had some 56Ks and, you know, you didn't really need them in the machines or the machines sometimes when they had, sometimes I thought they were no good anymore and it turned out it's just the power supply I found out later and stuff. And Anyway, I'd say I don't like to throw things away if, as long as they work. Yeah, there's one I remember. It's got the sticker on it when I bought it brand new. That's a 56K. I know that. So... If I ever need to fax anything, I'm ready. I have modems, and I think most half of my machines that are ready to go. And if your if your cable goes down, then you still get on the internet with dial-up. I have a. You ever heard of Net Zero? I've had an account with them since uh, way back when I had AOL back in the olden days. And uh, Net Zero was a free was a free free for life and. Uh, I don't I don't use up their money. I hardly ever use it, but once in a great while, when the internet goes down and I'm dying to see what's in my email, I will uh, dial into Net Zero on a modem, and I can't even read hardly an email because <laughs> it's so slow <laughs> with a 56k modem. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here is a oh, that's an ISA card. Uh, uh no, gonna go. Where's the one I just took out? So. Not even close. I saw, I've been watching a bunch of videos. I've been, I've always kind of wondered, you know, if servers back on another subject servers um uh, you know they have a, lo a lot of processors a lot of them and a lot of memory and two, two you know like dual processors and huge amounts of memory and always thought if i can make me a desktop out of an old server once it got old you know but still good enough for me but it, the downfalls they have very very low like 32 megabytes even the, you know even the ones from you know five years ago with 32 megabytes of video vj video memory and that won't even you can't even watch a video on that. I got 256 megabytes in that other machine. I can barely watch a video. So uh, anyway, 
there's a guy that's that's a he's an IT guy and he has a bunch of servers at home and he's and there's other people I found out after watching his videos that have been doing it and so anyway they're putting video cards and servers and making game machines out of them and stuff and uh, I, you know but I would like to be able to have a nice nice fast machine run some virtual machines and do some video uh, encoding editing and stuff and so I'm really interested in that now uh, especially now but uh, no. This is an I say if you're not if you if you were born last week and you <laughs> this is an I say this is from way back in the olden days. This is a VGA. This is in the uh, recent history to me in olden days to some of you. And uh, this is the last one before PCIe, you know, X1 and 8 and 16 and on. But uh, oh, and what my point was is he was sticking a. Uh, a six, an X16 PCI card in the slot, and it wouldn't go in there because the slot, he would cut part of the slot out. One, one, he just actually cut the end of the card off, and the thing actually still worked. And he said they would work, and people were doing it, but they would just not be quite as fast. And he messed around with that for a while, and then and well, he showed an adapter that he bought, but he didn't use it, and then later on he used it, and he, and he got one working pretty darn good that way. But you can buy an adapter for about five bucks that allow you to plug them in, as long as you have, like... Uh, yeah, I think it was USB 3 in your server and everything, and plug that into the uh, uh, PCIe 8X, uh, and then that'll convert that 16X over and go through. Instead of going through the PCI bus, it goes through the uh, USB 3. I think it was USB, but anyway, uh, yeah, I think so. But I've, I'm pretty sure I've used this one, unless there was another one like that. I don't know. That's an ISA, though. I think... It says on my little note that I needed to find the... I even put a little pad in there to protect it. It says in my note to self that I had even... Uh, I wonder if I had really had that in there to keep those from sticking everything. Uh, probably have to take the note out. Um, then I needed to find a driver. It might have been, I'm sure it worked, you know, but in the BIOS, but probably didn't work right in the operating system. But being that it's that old, uh, I don't really have a machine that I really mess with. I have some machines that old, but it's probably about 8 megabytes or something like that. That's, uh, that's all I've got that I can think of, unless I go outside and yank one out of one of those PM3s, but they're laying up. When I was out there earlier, that where I, where my air compressor is, that's where that is. And uh, I'd rather, I'm not gonna do that tonight. Much as I would like to, not going to get into that. Because they're laying up high and I'd have to take them down. And the video is already really long anyway. I mean, I could just take them down, not on video, of course, and that's probably what I should do. I did think about grabbing that other one, but you know that other one that's laying here on the floor? It's probably, no telling. I'm getting to think that's why they all got given to me, because they just, they wouldn't run, they wouldn't even boot up. and I wouldn't even, you know, <laughs> run right at all. Uh, usually when he gives me stuff, the only thing really wrong with them is just the operating system. Like that one that I use as my main machine, that uh, uh, Lenovo i5, it... It uh, it was an encrypted Windows 7 Pro, and it got they lost their couldn't get into it. So I I filled around with it for a little bit. I didn't want the operating system. It was a uh, set up to talk just to talk to a server. Didn't even have any software on it really, but uh, for a corporate environment, and uh, I just reformatted it and I put Fedora. I I had the uh, you know the install. CDs and uh, has the license on the back, you know. So I, I, what I did was a dual boot Fedora 23 and Windows 7 Pro. Then I never really used Windows 7 and fine. so now I'm getting ready to re upgrade it to Fedora 25 or 26. Depends on when I get it done. Pretty soon 26 will be out. I think this this video card got killed by that by those shorted pins. Bet you anything. I'll put it back in there for right now, I guess. Because I'll have to go out there and take those things down, 
get them opened up, see if they have the right kind of card, all that kind of stuff. I think I'll put it back in here. Let me kind of look. It's always a possibility that, you know, like the, uh, the guy was trying to straighten it out and he took it out and didn't, it seemed like it was in there good and didn't get it all the way back in or something. Still other possibilities, even though it looks, I mean, I'm definitely going to stick another card in it because before I fill around with it a bunch more, but there could be other things, other things plugged in wrong, a jumper in the wrong place on the motherboard, but that's the most likely I would say, wouldn't you? Usually the most obvious thing. See something that obvious, that's usually what it is. Usually. Yeah, but that big old, I don't know if you can see that in the video. That big old, um, I'm about to lose my mind. Big old audio, it looks like a quarter inch audio jack, a uh, female for a reg just a regular cable, but it screws up to that little uh, eighth inch audio. Uh, evidently it's audio. If I could see the, board good enough down there, I could tell. Speaker out, so it's not like an, you know, line out, but it's speaker out. Looks like it has two cables, audio cables, the SPDIF cables, probably. I can't read it, but I imagine that's what that is. Yeah, one of them I can see the shape of it. That's what it looks like. Looks like they're probably going up to the. Uh, yeah, I can feel, I can't really see, but I can feel that there's, there are some cables plugged in. So these drives. Oh yeah, one says CD, HP DVD and, and HP CD, so evidently it had factory H DVD and CD. It may be a CD writer and a DVD reader only. That's how that used to be. But uh, one thing, well, the reason I'm even fooling with any of this stuff is because you can make real good servers out of these machines. As long as they're well, this one's loud, but if well, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's going to be off somewhere where you don't have to listen to it, but. Man, that that fa that uh, CPU fan is just horribly loud. I mean, you can always get another one that's not a new one that's not loud. But uh, I generally don't want to spend any money on them. You know, if I have parts, I'll put them in there. Yeah, I don't think there was, uh, anyway, um, yeah, my IBM server is around this age, and it's been really good. It wasn't a server, it was just a, de you know, a desktop. And I put Fedora 23 server. That's Linux, when I, if you don't know what Fedora is. It's a Linux distro. I forget sometimes that what I'm, you know, saying... Okay, I don't know. I didn't know that camera was down that long. Just realized I didn't put my card, my, vid my video card back in there with everything else. Now, <coughs> and the microphone falling. Let me put this up. Let's see. Put my thermal paste where I can get to it without pulling that spray out. I'm moving around too much. I'm sorry. I don't know the audio is cutting in and out. I'm sure. I just realized. Okay, let's uh, let's change back the cameras before I hit the on button. But uh, yeah, I'll leave it sitting right there.
I believe it's sitting right there. I'm disappointed that they usually have. Uh, they usually work. They just don't. Uh, usually, it's the operating system. Hell, either way, I made it. I made it. If you if you don't know how to work on computers at all, maybe you saw some things you never thought of. Uh, let's see. What do I want? I want to switch to. Yeah, one and two. And now I gotta switch me over so I can see the video output. I guess I could just watch it through the camera. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at there. HP. Well, let's just let it see if it boots, and we won't try to get into BIOS until we, you know, get a little further in there. I don't like my thing hanging out there. There we go. Maybe that's better. Huh. Maybe it somehow made it reset. Uh, might not have unplugged it after unshortening those pins. I don't know about that. Okay, disk boot failure, each search system disk. Let's see if these. I was going to look at them and let's close. I'm going to look and see how dirty those uh, CD drives look. Okay. Um, well, that's good. I'm su I'm surprised. I really I, was, I think I said don't expect to see anything. Cool. I want to see uh, rename that camera because you can't see what's going on at all. I mean, you can see. Okay, you can see the monitor. Okay. Okay, now I wanted. Yeah, I know. I noticed that before I started, but I, I didn't expect anything good to happen. Okay, so I finally got me a long stick here. I got my back scratcher. If you can see it or not, but anyway, instead of having to lean up there and stick my throat on the microphone, this does work. It, sometimes it's hard for me to do it with it, but. Oh, I hate getting that filthy. Well, at least I. It's late, and when I quit this, I will go to bed. I mean, take a bath, take a shower, and go to bed. Okay, so CD drive opens quite nicer. It did. Oh, I want to get up there and look at it. <clears throat>
Okay, the thing is loud, so I'm going to put the lid on it so I don't have to listen to it as much. I may have made it louder over here where I'm at. It's definitely an unbearable fan. You know, I have a brand new heat sink and fan that I bought one time and it didn't fit the machine I bought it for. It's for an AMD processor, but heck, I don't know for sure what this is yet. That's Intel. But the fan would probably be about that size. It'd probably fit. Okay, disk boot failure. Let's try and see if it'll boot to a CD. That DVD in the top there. It won't push the door open, but if you open the door, then it'll work. I didn't have that where you could see it, but USBs are, I guess I'll put my mic, I don't think I need to be on that side while I'm working. Yeah, that's why I had one camera on the right, because I wasn't thinking about needing to see the modem. There's two. three ports well there's a there is a serial port and i think a 1934 port or 1394 whichever way you say it and then there's two usbs Thirteen ninety four was uh i think it was fire also called firewire let's see if the compute keyboard's working to make control alt delete worked good so the mouse will probably work too I have worn my neck out, and usually I like to have my neck supported, and especially when I'm bending over and looking down like that. Okay, HP, cool. So, yeah, I mean, that, the electronics is surprisingly uh, <coughs> tough sometimes. I mean, it, it was shorted out there. It wasn't a real bad, I mean, if it was like 12 volts to ground or something, it probably would have burned it up, but. But it could have been. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Oh, I didn't hit F1 or anything. Okay, I got to get into BIOS now. It could be because I make that put that uh, hard drive on master, huh? That's right. I put it. Uh, well, I put a SD card in the USB adapter, but I don't know if this thing will boot. Oh, I, I. It's either F1 or F2. Well, I hit. Oh, I didn't hit escape. I hit print screen by accident. I'm, I was thinking I was hitting escape. Or delete, I guess is what I was thinking of. Either delete F1, F2, sometimes escape. But it's entering setup. So, uh, success so far. Yeah, that, that hard drive, I'd be surprised if, you know, it has a good operating system on it. But it said no hard drive. So it may be that changing that jumper messed that up. Yeah, master auto. Okay, let's see. Primary slave auto. And see how it sees a CD drive. It's a, a secondary master CD slave Pioneer DVD. And memory 512, two 256s. So I think the hard drive is not showing up because I took it off a of cable select. Some machines won't work when you put them on master instead of cable select. So I'm going to have to put that back. And I'll do that before I go uh, messing around, you know. Like, well, I mean, it doesn't matter if I boot into a USB. I have two regular USB sticks, too, that could probably boot to one of them. But 
I want to see if the hard drive, I want to see if I can get the hard drive to show up. Yeah, it doesn't, it sh I believe it should be showing some information to see if it saw it at all. Like if the hard drive was there but the operating system was broke, you should see the information out to the side just like with the CD drives. So. Plug and play OS. Video driver PCI, auto detect, USB auto, auto, supervisor password, local bus, onboard LAN enabled. Okay, and then power, stay off after system fan. <coughs> Temperature is 90, about right, 98 degrees, 96, 98. C, I never pay attention to that because it means nothing to me. I'm American. American. CPU fan speed. Boot. Boot time diagnostic screen disabled. Quick boot. Floppy disk. ID hard drive none. Yeah, because. Oh, okay. Other boot device. Oh, SCSI, like I was talking about. One time I put that in one because I couldn't get it to boot to a USB. Uh, network, I've done that a few sometimes. Let's see. SCSI and network. I don't want it enabled at all. Net, yeah, I don't really need the network. That just slows down the boot. It's not going to boot to a USB unless... Uh, there is a, a, a boot manager called Plop. Yeah, Plop Boot Manager? No, not Plop. Uh, there's another one that you can put on. I have it on a f floppy disk, and uh, I can tell it to with boot it to that floppy disk and tell it to boot to a USB, but I won't do that right now. But actually, I would rather the CD be the next one anyway. Oops. What did I just do? Hit Escape at the wrong time. Disabled CD or DVD. You got to pick one or the other. You can't have, you can't have two CDs. But what I want to do is move it up. Move that one up. Let's see. There we go. Hit plus. These older biases work. I have trouble with the newer ones because they work different. Okay, now that way I can, I can do floppy CD or um, a lot of my. I have a lot of boot CDs. Some of them are DVDs, but. I can always switch it if I need to. This being older, I'll probably the CDs of what I'd want anyway. But what's what's on the CDs? Okay, and then if the hard drive will show up when I put it back on cable select, I'll be in good shape. Exit saving changes. Yes. Okay. But boy, that's an annoying loud. Everything's really pretty loud about it, and it weighs about 50 pounds, I swear. But yeah, I'll, I'll swap that uh, jumper on that hard drive right quick. I have a two, well, it doesn't have anything on it, but I have a 250 gigabyte hard drive laying down here that came out of one of those P3s that wasn't formatted right. It had a broken 40 gig and a 250 gig hard drive. Okay, yeah. Oh, I forgot to put it on. Uh, Four second delay. Let's do that right now before I forget. Just control alt delete. I think it's gonna be F one, but I'm not sure. Yeah, F one. Yeah, everything's loud on the darn thing. It wouldn't be a server I'd want in here in my room. Now if you had it off in a closet or something, it'd be fine. That that CPU fan quit making all that noise, that high pitch noise. Now I can hear the hard drive. And just the whole thing over, overall. It's got a back fan, CPU fan, a fan in the uh, uh, power supply. Oh, and I did feel the airflow stuck my finger in the fan by accident. I think you saw me, might have saw me jump. Uh, it's actually pulling in. The big fan in the back is pulling in, blowing towards the uh, CPU. And the CPU is pulling, whatever, best I can tell. And so then I guess it's all like dispersing through the case. And that's fine. That, that's maybe just as well a way to do it. Blowing cool air in to the CPU. I always figure it's kind of better to directly blow the heat out of the case and let the cool air pull in through all the other vents and everything and circulate through the whole machine, you know. But as long as that works, it's fine. I'm not going to change it right now, even if I decided to change it later. Swap, turn the fans over, you know. 
But since that looks like that was the way it was from the factory, maybe they had some super geniuses figure all that out. So we'll just trust them for now. And then if we just start getting it running and, and find out that it doesn't work so good, then we'll we'll figure it out ourselves. Let's see. Boot. Uh, should be a power. Hardware monitor. I don't know if you can. I really haven't ever seen one that won't let you. Pentium 4. Oh, cool. At least it's not a Celeron. They usually are louder, though. And make more heat. They're, as far as being a server, you know, you you wouldn't want to stay in a room with a Pentium 4 as your server. I've got a, my first machine ever built a Pentium 4. I love that machine still. But... Uh, so 2.4 gigahertz. I didn't pay attention to all that. Oh, here we go. 1700 megahertz. What? 1700 hertz, 400 megahertz. What? 1700 megahertz slash 400 megahertz. So I guess it's only at 1.7 gigahertz? Oh. It's being four, though. Auto, I'm going to make sure it's in. Well, let's leave it on auto because the keyboard's working like it should and everything. Usually I have to turn on USB. I don't know why it's called legacy. Well, a lot of times you have to turn on USB keyboard and you didn't in here, so I guess it came with USB keyboard support. IO configuration. I don't you always try to do that auto. I never mess with that if I don't have to. Everything's enabled. <coughs> So, I do not see a spot in there where I can set the uh, timing to tell it to wait four seconds before it goes off. So, I'm going to have to go with what it's got. Save and exit changes. Okay, I want to fix that. Um, um, fix the, the jumper. Put it back like it was originally. I imagine that's how it belongs. Drive. I had this, these out because I thought I needed them, and they're just in my way now. Gosh. Put them up there. There we go. And I'll just wait, and this time I'll shut it down. Okay. Okay, it just went off. Just like that. If you don't get in too big of a hurry, it works. All right.
well, I might want to get my, uh, um, actually, I've got that USB stick in it. Well, it's not recognizing it. I don't think, some machines will recognize. This one won't because I've looked in the BIOS. Some of them will recognize USB sticks, but not the SD cards, but uh, in the USB adapter. But I heard the hard drive kind of make a little bit of a normal noise, so I thought, well, maybe it's reading the hard drive. But I even in I switched to the other cable too, you know, the hard, uh, power cable. But I want to check my tester and make sure it's getting the right voltage. So I'm going to turn it on again. Let's see, what's my box? Okay, let me go ahead and call them out now. The fan changes. When you move things around a little bit, it, I'm, I'm wondering, starting to wonder if something is hitting it. When I move that stuff around, it makes a change in tone. I won't get my finger too far back there, but... I thought this thing went right up on the fan. It actually, in the back, you know, the, it doesn't actually go over that fan shroud. Fan shroud, just like a truck, like a car. Okay, so 11.72. Yeah, it should work. Uh, sometimes, you know, I've got one that I'm under my that I'm powering my audio my audio amplifiers, my car audio amplifiers that I use for my sound in here. 5.06. And I think one of them's down to one, 1125 or 1135, and I don't think it'll run a hard drive, but it'll run. There's two power supplies in there. One of them will run the hard drives, and one of them won't. I think 1172 would would be all right. <coughs> I'm gonna swap them. Out. That's the one that I know has, <coughs> has, uh, you know, good voltage. I, if it does, this one should because it's going through it, you know. But uh, let's test it anyway. 5.07, yeah. That's the first one in the daisy chain, so it would kind of make sense. It might be a little tiny bit higher. 11.73, see, it's just a tiny bit higher. So... Uh, yeah, it makes the same noise, and I, you know, when I had the cover off, though, I didn't see it touching anything. I'm, a, I'm gonna take it off again because, I mean, if it's sitting there rubbing something, you want to make sure it's not doing that, you know. I thought, well, I'll put that on there now, you know. Well, maybe it'll help with everything. Up with the noise and everything, but that worries me because it always wants to lean over there, but you can't get it to go, can't get the cover on with it like that. It's just not long enough. I already tried that the first day. Now, 
and I don't I didn't mention that earlier I forgot to but if you saw me way earlier sticking my ear up to a screwdriver up by the you can do that I learned that working on cars you can take a screwdriver or a metal rod or something and put it up to your ear just to kind of press down on the actually you can press down on on the I don't know if I can show it I don't know if I'm showing it right press down on that ground for it and close close your close your ear up with it and then put it real, right up against, don't stick it in the fan, of course, put it right up against the case of the fan or something, close to what you're trying to listen to, and you can just, you can decipher, it'll, it'll change the tone a whole lot, but it, you will decipher which one's making the most noise, or in a car you can tell, like, if a lifter's tapping or something like that, you can tell which one, you can move up and down the valve cover, but that spins really freely, so I don't know why it's so loud. They don't just spin forever because they're ma they have their magnets fans. Well, those are spinning. Yeah, some some of them do, some of them don't. They don't spin a whole whole. See, it'll stop pretty fairly quickly. That one's about the same. It stops a little quicker, maybe, but they have uh, magnets in them, so um, permanent magnets, um, if I remember right. So they're gonna do that, uh, but. Uh, See, it's kind of going forward and back if you just barely, that's called, they call that cogging on a permanent magnet motor. They, uh, they cog because the magnets pull it back into, the, the poles back into alignment. When you have really strong magnets, I watch all those videos where they're like turning ceiling fans into generators and stuff. When you have really strong magnets, it uh, makes it where you don't want to start up. Yeah, that's that actually is oh almost inch and a half, two inches away from that deal. So it's really just kind of directing the air. So uh, I just I'll stick that cover back on there. I think it I think it does help me help with the noise in my you know right here me right here by it. It's got those nice little finger nuts on it but they're they don't work real great they've been probably been crossed a few times or something Yeah, I don't really need it all the way in. I just wanted it to be up there good. Get the meter back over here. Okay, now. Let me get back in my spot. Okay. I got a floppy boot disk that I'm going to put in there and see if I can make it boot. Well, I could put a CD in it. Yeah, let's do that first because sometimes that's more tricky to get that to work. Let me see what I got here. I want something that's diagnostic. Yeah, parted magic, that's what I want. So that way I can check the hard drive and everything. Disk list remote bootable. That's the one where you can boot this up on another machine and then boot others to the network, but you've got to have a switch that doesn't have a DHCP server. I had one that I was using for that once in a while, but it, uh, I had to start using it in my regular stuff because my Linksys router got to where it's about to die, I think. Okay, so it's got a. Okay, yeah, this one runs good in Opinion 4. Note says, runs well in Blue FIC. That's my Opinion 4. 
So I'm not using a CD right now. Man, I'll leave it open because it's going to be warm. See if it caught it in time. See if it even reads it. Uh, I haven't looked in on my feed yet, but let's first, let's see if we can get this going to boot up. Then I will. It's going to be where I'm going to have to, much fun as all this is, I'm going to have to break, take a break, period, here in a minute. I think it's taking longer because it's, uh, I started to switch over to my other machine and look at my feed, but I can't. Then I'll lose my mouse and keyboard, and that would just mess everything up. Okay, runs from RAM. Let's see. I think running 312 megabytes. Yeah, that's enough. I got 512. Let's just go run from RAM then. Yeah. I think run from RAM will be fine. Yeah, I really don't want to, since it's booting up and I'm going to be looking for a monitor and everything else, I can't switch over. So I'll just hope my feed is good. And I uh, guess what I could do, I figure everything's okay. It usually is. I'm going to take a quick break while this is booting up. It's going to take at least two minutes, I think, to boot up. That'd be long enough, I think. Okay, be back.
Yeah, I'm back. Well, it does boot faster when you <clears throat> when you don't do all the RAM. The newer version, which I don't have on a CD, 6.0. This is 5.9. It uh, it boots faster to RAM. Well, of course, it's on like one to four gigs of RAM that I've been booting it on too. This is 512 megabytes, so. This would probably run better on this machine. There's a couple of apps that have been updated that work a little better, but otherwise it's pretty good, this version here. But yeah, I made it back before it booted. Uh, one of them I have has a uh, Team Viewer already on it or, or VNC or something, and if it does, I can just start it up and then hook it up to it on my desktop and show a real nice screen, you know, screencast of it. Because I want to check out that hard drive and see if it can be read by uh, Parted Magic, by uh, G Parted and stuff like that. See if it's actually completely not working at all or what's going on with it. But, uh, okay, yeah, see, it's, it, boot, it throws out the uh, CD and then, uh, you could actually put another CD in there and run it if you needed to. That's what's cool about booting it to RAM like that. And it should run great because, you know, it only needs 312 and I have 512, so megabytes. So. I'm getting a drink. I'm really thirsty. The specs are up at the top right. I'm, I know you, I can barely read it. You couldn't read it for nothing on that camera on a crazy angle like that. But uh, I want to see if it can see the hard drive, see if it can eat, you know, at all or anything. First, let's see if I can actually put it in. Uh, I don't see it on the desktop. It seems like one of them had uh, Team Viewer or something in the uh, already in it. It's a little slow, but it's all right. What I have done before is VNC viewer, but not server. Okay. You might be able to run Team Viewer in here by plugging in my USB stick and running it uh, from the stick. I'm going to try it and see. Remember which I got two of them, and one of them I'll have it on there, and the other one won't. <coughs> let's first let's just see if the hard drive. Oh, let's look at. Uh, let me go look at check my stream and make sure my stream's okay. Well, see if we can get before I flip over there. I'll plug in this USB stick. I'm just leaving that CD out in case I need to throw one in there before when it's rebooting or something. Now, uh, smart control. Uh, oh, oh, it went in all by itself. I was thinking, yeah, the mount drive devices, okay, because it doesn't auto mount stuff. Okay, yeah, it sees my Sandisk Cruiser, sees the CDs. But it doesn't see the hard drive. Uh-oh. So unless Parted Magic can see it. Uh, we may have a little trouble there. I mean, unless G Parted. It's right there on the desktop. Let me make this to worse. Let's see. That should be... If that's my... <coughs> I don't know if it's in the, if it's there, it may be in there, Debane 8, no. This one's Debane 8. Okay, that's what I installed Debane 8 on my laptop with, so that's not the one I want anyway. <coughs> the monitor's not aligned right. <coughs> <It's> just right. <coughs> I can see that. <coughs> Sometimes if you switch off and switch back on, it'll align, but I'm going to go ahead and get that USB stick out. Put the other one in there. 
I'm using a, a, a graphic uh, user interface to mount and unmount these sticks. I'm trying to get see if I can get Team Vera will run on here, the portable version. Then um, I can do this in remote desktop. That would be nice. Then I can, when I get over there to my machine, I can. Okay, I stuck it in the other USB this time, I thought. Well, for one thing, I want to see if it worked, but I also thought, well, yeah, there it goes. I also thought, well, uh, you know, since I had one, I don't want to confuse the machine, uh, you know, if it didn't have enough time to re recover. But, uh, okay, mount. Didn't open up, oh, I guess because I closed the, uh, I don't know, I guess I closed the uh, um, file manager application. There we go. There we go. <coughs> okay. It'll be a studio stuff. Okay, I think it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the tight VNC. Team Viewer, there it is. Okay, Team Viewer Windows installer, Team Viewer Deb, Team Viewer RPM. And I don't think that Part of Magic is a Devane or, or RPM based distro like Fedora. <laughs> Uh, so I've got. I think it's like more like Slack or something. I don't know what. I don't think you can install. I think I tried it before. I don't think you can install from an RPM or a Deb. I tried installing things in it before. I'm trying to see. I should have it unzipped. Maybe I don't have it unzipped. Oh yeah, I want, it has to be unzipped on the machine you're using it on. I think. Yeah. Okay. So if I unzip this. It's not real big, I don't think. Doesn't it have an archive program in here? It should be. Compress. Okay, I'll say other program, and then... Let's just go to the archive, I mean to the programs... See if we can find like a some kind of archiving un, unzipping program. There we go. Archive manager. What else is in there? So I'll just open up archive manager and then see if I can open up that and run it. Not, it's not making that high pitch noise now. I think it quits. I think it slows down. I think the fan control may be slowing it down. But then the whole thing overall is rather noisy and just a, kind of a loud hum. I don't see the... Uh, SDA1. Okay, it's calling it SDA1 in there. Team Viewer Remote Desktop Software. That's the only, it must be it. Oh, it's a folder. Oh, yeah, you got to go in the folder first. Does it not see it? It sees the execute, the deb, and the RPM, but it doesn't see the tar GZ, tar XZ. Yeah, it's not a tar GZ, it's a tar XZ. That's sometimes. Some programs won't see them, I guess. But I'm in the right folder. How do I? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the right folder. It doesn't see the images. It just sees things it can open. Dang it. Okay, so it don't look like we're going to get any remote desktop any e easily. Uh, if I knew, also, you know, I might use up all my RAM. So I'm going to unmount that and take it out of there. That might have some stuff I could boot to if I, you know, if it would boot to USB, but I'd have to. 
how to do I mean G part is what I really want anyway so but let me get over here and make sure my stream is good and then I'll go to just camera uh, two or one or whichever one it is let's see no nope, camera one guess yeah camera one will give a bigger view of it at least so let's go let's go to the desktop though first and go check my stream I haven't done that in a while I might be talking to myself for nothing at least if I'm talking to myself on video it means something right <clears throat> okay so I'm gonna have a drink but that was faster than I expected okay history previous session Okay, it scares you when it first opens up because it looks like you're not live, but you got to wait for it to load. Oh, that's long, but it looks like we're live and nationwide, worldwide. That looks really far back, though. <coughs> but, uh, <coughs> yeah, good health, everything's cool. Nobody's tried to talk to me. Uh, 1.36 a.m. on Saturday morning, no wonder. You mean nobody else is staying up thinking about computers right now on a Friday, Saturday, Saturday night, Saturday morning? Why not? You should be messing with computers. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so um, I'll make that closer. You know, you don't need to see the machine the side of the box for no reason. And go back <coughs> to the other. Yeah, when the, when the mon whatever the monitor shows us, what I'll be showing you. Okay, good. I know that's not a good view, but it's kind of the best I can do in, in this situation. <clears throat> I don't have a way to put the camera right behind me. Well, there is one way I can set a ladder behind me, a painting ladder with a <laughs> tray. I did that before with a laptop one time. But that means even more wearing myself out. I'm glad I wore myself out tonight running around doing all this. Okay, so... Um, that keeps jumping back to the middle, so I'm going to let it stay in the middle. But let's go to Parted, Parted Magic. I really wish I could have done the remote desktop. I don't know if it would run on uh, Parted Magic anyway. You know, and this is a little bit older version on to top everything else off. So I can't hardly stand just having things in odd places to, that are odd to me anyway. I'll put that right in the middle for now. And once it looks for a while, no device detected. I think it's looked long enough can't see the hard drive period yet it sounds like I can hear it humming along I mean it could be bad no telling huh so I I'm not gonna do it tonight but I will have to put another hard drive in it and see Maybe that's why the hard drive does seem a bit loud. It's not making any knocking noises like it's got a bad rod in it, though. That other one and that other one, it was just knocking like crazy, like a bad engine. But uh, it's humming really loud, though. Just now I realize a lot, that main noise I'm hearing right now, it's not that fan noise anymore. It's, it, I think it's the hard drive. But... Uh, so the smart control, that's not going to see anything. Set canning the system. Let's see if it can find a hard drive. Never know. If the, if part of Magic can't find a hard drive at all, then you probably got hard drive problems. Yeah, it's. Uh, I didn't realize what time it was. This late, there's no point in, I'm getting tired. I knew I was getting pretty tired. And I got to pick all this stuff up that I drug out and threw all, I've got all my bed full of stuff over there. I got to pick all that up, clean everything up, and then uh, take a bath and probably eat again before I go to bed. So I believe this is about as far as I want to go now. Maybe between, uh, next time I'll boot it, in, maybe I'll boot it into something that can, I can run a uh, remote desktop in. And uh, still scanning the system and, you know, show a real nice desktop video of what's going on with it. 
I'll open up. It has a Chromium on here, an old version of it. Let's see if we got internet. I think we do. Might have to. Sometimes you have to click on that little network icon at the bottom right to get the network to work. I see. I usually I put everything in different desk desk workspaces or desktops. I usually call them, and you can, but uh, I'm not quite sure how to move them right here. I like everything. I like everything to be full screen. Yeah, move. Oh, uh, no, that's just to move it that way. Usually it'll say uh, send to other desktop. Oh, there. Send to desktop two. There we go. So now I can make that full screen if I wanted. To. This one doesn't necessarily need to be full screen. It would if I was working with it and it was working. But I just yeah, no drives found. It finally finished. Okay. That's what I was waiting on. So that drive isn't showing up. And I'm not sure. Let's try going to the, I'm just going to any, any link. Just see if we have internet. <clears throat> yep, got internet. That's the Party Magic uh, forum page where you can ask questions and stuff. Party Mag Magic used to be a free open source project, but they changed to being a proprietary closed source. Right after version 6.0 or 0.2 or something. I guess nobody was donating, so they said, all right. But people love it, and everybody uses it, so I guess they said, well, we're just going to have to start charging. But the older versions still do everything I need to do so far, so that's good. I don't know what they charge for. it. If you're using it like for your work or something, it would definitely be worth it. Worth it. I was looking to see if you know anything's changed recently. You can download it, but I think it'll be like a trial version or something. For a while, you couldn't find a way to... Oh, yeah, option one, purchase for $9. Well, that's not expensive. Oh, option two. Oh, that must be like... I don't know. Well, anyway, if he's interested in it, you can go here and try to figure all this out. So that's his 30-year subscription. Yeah, that's the thing I didn't like about it. It's not You don't buy it. It's a subscription base. So kind of like went, way went Microsoft on us. They went from free and open source to went going Microsoft on us all in one time. But, you know, they, they gave it away free for a long time. So evidently, you know, some uh, open source projects get enough support. They can keep doing it, and some of them don't. So I understand that. So anyway, um, test disk. Let's open up test disk. Maybe it can see it. Maybe it's broken. This will can like restore lost partitions and stuff. Create. No hard disk found. So yeah, it's just flat and not showing up at all. And since I've tried it on master and uh, part, you know, it could have a bad cable. I didn't try that. But first, I I'll just like throw this one of these other. I've got another hard drive that I know shows up. It doesn't have a good partition on it, but I know it shows up. And uh, <clears throat> that I pulled out of that other machine and see. And then if it, that didn't work, I would try the cable and all that sort of thing. These cables, well, I mean, I've seen them. They've, I've had them go bad and stuff. And you never know. But, uh, um, let's see. Something I am rather interested in, maybe, while I'm still here. Oh, I found an extra screw. What's that go to? Hmm. Oh, it didn't lose it. <clears throat> I don't remember what I took it out of. I'll have to look around in there. I took a screw out of something and now I don't know where it goes. But I've got my floppy disk over here on my desk in a container. Yeah, maybe it's plop boot manager. I didn't think it was plop. Yeah, I guess it is plop. There's one that I first one I ever used that's based like a Windows type program. 
It was, I guess, that's the one I was thinking was called Plop. But, uh, I still have a bunch of floppies. Never know when you need one. Mine's are just inside of the box that was closed. Dust can get anywhere. Oh, I think those are all un yeah, unformatted. My dad, same guy that gave me these computers gave me a bunch of floppies. Uh, when he got, you know, he had a bunch he'd got somewhere. And actually, he's supposed to have had a bunch more. And he was going to go ahead and give me those cause, instead of throwing them away. But he never did give me any more. I don't know what he did. They're probably still in his old room or something. Okay, let's see. I don't think we can read floppies in Party Magic. Let's see if there's anything to read floppies. I just want to see if the disk works before I try to boot to it. Yeah, part of that noise... Like I said, I don't really think I hear that fan noise anymore, but I hear another noise that sounds like a grinder. Oh, not a grinder, but I don't, I don't know. It may be showing up on the mic. It's loud and me, not high pitch, but medium pitch, mid range. Really great. It's on your nerves. That's probably the hard drive. So it may just be a bad drive. I would say it's pro, it, either, unless the cable's bad or something, it's a bad drive because. The noise, and because none of these programs can read it at all. And these are some of my, some of the best programs, not some of my go-to programs. I'm going to look in the Midnight Commander File Manager. It might have a, a mounter for floppies in it. It's more of an old school type file manager. I heard something making noise like the floppy. Let's see. Root. I'm gonna go to media, CD-ROM, CD-ROM. Sometimes the CD-ROM shows up. There's three of them, so, and there's really only two. So I thought, well, maybe one of those is the floppy. And T local USB. I don't have a USB in there anymore. Took that out. Okay. Uh, well, let's try the regular file manager. I hear a little something there. I didn't see the light come on. Of course, you can find it. Yeah, oh, there we go. Floppy drive. There we go. It lights up. Let's see if it can read it. If it can read it, then it should boot to it. It depends on... The floppies are real particular. There's several different versions of the way they write and... Uh, you know, you got sometimes you've got to write. I don't know why you can get something that will actually read in your machine is to write it on your machine. You know, um, it's taking a long time, and the light's on, so it's trying. So it may be going to read it. Um, so you really, you know, if you want to try to boot to a floppy, you better stick it in the. It's probably want to stick it in the machine and see if it will read it first. Uh, if you wrote it on something else. If you get it down to which one is which and you know which type of floppy you wrote it on, then you'll know. And you look on the floppy drive that you're using, then you can see, yeah, I know that type so-and-so will work on there. Did not receive a reply, possible calls, internet multiplication, did not message security, blah, blah, blah. That's weird. <laughs> Let me try to read that. Did not receive a reply. Possible causes include the remote application, did not send a reply, the message Bus security policy block the reply. The reply timed out, expired, or network connection was broken. It's a floppy. <laughs> what are you talking about? But it is talking to it. <coughs> it's, it's making the floppy noises and the lights on. But uh, usually if you click on floppy in one of these file managers that has it in there, it'll mount it for you. So probably, I'm going to go ahead and do a reboot and see, but probably it won't. Boot to it. It might, but we'll try. If it does, then I can stick a USB in there. Actually, I'll probably stick it in there ahead of time. Yeah, directory does not exist. 
<sighs> I've already forgot which one was the one. I used to, the one with the red used to be my rescue. The writing fades out. When you, as soon as you touch it, it wipes off with these markers I have. One of these is the Bane 8, and the other one is is more of a couple different systems on it. Now I don't remember. I think maybe it was the blue one. So I'm going to... put it in there and it won't mount itself actually I think it did yeah it did maybe because I had already mounted it before maybe it was doing it and I didn't realize it probably because I'd already done it before yeah and even that no I didn't do that last time see this mountain application pops up now I don't have to unmount it to reboot though but uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the app, uh, the you know, the software to reboot it so that it won't do anything wacky to the floppy drive. And I know I've already been BIOS, so it should boot to it. Let's see, I've already got my CD out. There's a there is actually a password for this version of Part in Magic, so I have it written on a sticker. I just saw that and I go, oh, or a sticky note. I go, oh, I need to put that on that. I stick it on that CD. I like my USBs because they have several programs on one thing. Oh, well, I hear it. Boot failure. Insert system disk and press enter. Yeah, it can't boot to that floppy. Okay. So I would have, I'd have to write one on this to, to use my flop. Now, either that floppy doesn't work or it's just not formatted right. And I, I've ran into that. I've In the last couple of years, I've got out some old machines and fiddled with them. And turned out it was that the floppy worked. I had decided, ah, oh, the floppy don't work. Turned out, no, it wasn't the floppy. It was just written in one that didn't wasn't compatible. Well, I've got a plop CD. That would might boot me to a USB. That can keep shows. One of these CDs has something it's a rewritable and it has something written in pencil because i just oh it's newer version of part of magic that's 6.6 .6. that might have booted on here and work but it wouldn't really it might be the one that has there's drbl it might be the one that has uh next time i'll try it i did i looked at it a while ago but i didn't bother to get my magnifying glass then i have some other tools that are fairly old but they would be all right for this machine Tails. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to stick this plop boot manager. That drive works pretty good. It'll shut when you tap it, just like they both do. Okay, so now I can reboot. Oh, I'm leaving the line on for you there. Um, but I'll just hit Control, I'll delete, and reboot. It could have been that that fan's not as loud as I thought, and it was hard drive the whole time. I just need to unplug the hard drive and find out. I won't do it right now. I keep saying I'm going to quit, and then I don't. Uh, where did that screen screw go? Remember taking a screw out of something and saying, "Okay, I don't want to lose that." Put it up here. I don't remember anything that's missing a screw. The hard drive caddy had through, and I put it in there. What? It won't boot to that. Why not? Disk error. That's hard to shut it down. Well, I kind of want the hard drive in there to see if there's anything that can see it. I was thinking I'll take it out, but I'll wait till the next video to mess with the hard drive, really, because I really am very hungry now. That's a bad. That's a sign I need to quit. Okay, <sighs> kind of watch everything this time. I wasn't really paying a heck of a lot of attention, but. Um, 
sometimes uh, when you do a control alt delete the cd might not read right or something or just sometimes it just don't read right yeah it's not going to read you can press any key to retry, but it won't. I doubt it will read it. Ow. Okay. I got something that boots pretty quick here, and that would probably boot on this. Fedora 16 LXDE. This time we'll boot to a CD. I just wanted to see if it boot to any of these sticks. Control off. I'm over here organ putting things back together. See if I don't do it at the right time, I'll forget like that screw. I wanted to put my little cover back on my, my USB adapter with the SD card in it. Now we hopefully this CD will read. Yeah, the same kind, you have the same kind of thing with CD writers. So different over the years, different uh, speeds and all. Now oh, there we go. That's fine. Okay, Fedora 60. And also, I found out one of my CD writers was actually on its way to going out, and it was writing them. They would bar, they would work in that machine, but no other. <laughs> That happened to me for a while too, and some of these there may be I probably got all those out of this case, but finally figured that out after a couple of three years of them. You know, they'd work in one machine and not in another. Then I finally decided to reburn them, and then they worked in everything. You know, and it was I finally figured out it was the writer I did it with. Uh oh, you can get some errors and it'll work. Oh, ATA, that's the hard drive not working. Yeah, it's trying to mount the hard drive. Fedora mounts the hard drive. I should have thought of that. It may not boot. It may go forever trying to mount the hard drive. I was thinking, well, it mounts all the drives. That'll be cool. But <laughs> not if it's broken. Not if it's broken, it won't. Okay, plop. Didn't work. Tools. Oh, there's Sardu. Grub. Sometimes one of these older ones might actually work in here. Yeah. It may still do it. I'm not going to quit yet. Yeah, it's going ahead and trying to boot now. We'll put it up to messages here. Hit escape while it's booting. You can see the messages. Put into. Okay, I'm looking while it's uh oh, awful lot of errors. I was looking at other CD, other candidates for booting it. I guess I'm ending up fooling around. Okay. Yeah, this may be what's going to happen is it won't work on. F it's just going to keep on and on trying to mount the bad hard drive. I haven't used a CD in so long that I don't know, or a DVD to boot one. I don't know what all I got in here anymore. Sometimes it'll go on and on and never work, and sometimes it'll go on and finally decide to quit trying the hard drive and work. Trying to mount the hard drive. Quit trying to mount the hard drive, but vein 7. Usually four-door based boot easier on machine, most machine, more machines than Debane, I think. I think. It used to be how I did everything was on CDs and DVDs. First it was CDs, because that was the way to do it. And not too many machines would even boot to USB. Okay. Did it get past those errors and give up? Yeah, buffer IOR device SR1. Uh, 
I don't know that it's actually quit trying yet. I don't think it's going to quit trying. Hear that noise? Yeah, it's making a bad hard drive noise. It's trying to read it. So, probably the cable's good. It was trying to read the whole, yep, SR, error, 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 error. System Rescue CD 1.5.8. That was the first Linux system I ever used, and I use it to uh, fix when you uh, when you lost or forgotten the password in XP, or when somebody gives you a 98 or XP or some or Vista or whatever. When somebody give you a machine, especially, and you don't know the password. Back before, I completely got tired of messing with Windows. I don't mess with it anymore much. Now I forgot which one I was thinking about using. Oh, that one. Okay. What does it say? Oh, it finally dropped back to uh, terminal window. Can't mount root file system. <coughs> Dropping down to shell. I don't know if I can get. <coughs> I don't know if I can <coughs> get the CD <coughs> or not. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get my Sardu. This is an older version of Sardu Multi Boot. Uh, well, I mean, you put what you want on there. I'm gonna hit. If control alt delete will do it. If you're fast enough, you can get you can get another one in there. Before it reboots and it'll read it. So we'll see if it will try to boot on. Uh, well, no, with party magic works just fine. And that's that's good. That's the, see the part of magic doesn't try to mount any of the drives. You just go ahead and do it yourself when you're ready to use them. So it can go ahead and boot up without finding all those errors. Fedora would you can't well you could do it. I'm sure if you knew how, but I mean from stock the CD doesn't uh, doesn't allow you to um, you know it's going to look for the hard drives. I mean well actually there might be some switches if you did some custom boot options and do some switches you could probably do that. I've never got into trying to I can't remember all those command line options and commands and stuff very well. A few basic ones. But yeah, there would be you could go into a kind of a custom boot mode and and write in some switches and tell it probably tell it not to not to mount any drives. You could probably just do that and then not it be a temporary change, you know, not a permanent one. I think it rebooted. I've had trouble with these custom. One, there's I got utility. Let's see, utility, utilex, and Sardu, and neither one of these will boot in some machines and not in others. But they were made back in the back in the olden days, actually, back in the Pentium four days, and you know, in that that time when that was pretty much a new, fairly new machine. That hard drive's going nuts now, trying to read the. My, if I unplugged it, it might go ahead and boot to these CDs. Yeah, it's rebooting. I guess I should have went ahead and um. Unplug the hard drive. Well, it sure is crappy to listen to that. Well, at least it's telling me something, you know. It's telling me that that hard drive is probably bad. You see, before it wasn't making any noise that I thought sounded like really the hard drive at first, and I thought maybe the cable's bad or something, you know. I think I need to. I tried to read the. That's the first time I've really seen it try to read this floppy. Okay, there we go. Uh, Slack. See, this one's got Slacks, Puppy, Tiny Core Linux, it's Rescue, System Rescue, Part of Magic. That's a different version. Slacks, Puppy, System Rescue. 
I think system rescue is a, is a command line thing. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and there's different, like, if you have trouble with your video modes, you can choose different video modes. Uh, system tools. Okay, we got grub. Graphical boot manager. So that way I could boot. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about this. It's got several boot managers. And if you can boot into this... Then I could stick in a USB and try to boot to that, especially if it has plop. It usually always works. Graphical boot manner, Ranish. Those are some of the older ones that I used to use. That hard drive's going nuts now trying to... Free dose, two different free doses. Uh, so, yeah, that might help me boot to my... I'm not going to do the USB stick right now, I don't think. But Okay, yeah, and then boot to the you know, system drive and stuff. I don't actually see anything I'm too interested in using though. Slacks, I don't really use that. Puppy, I couldn't do much with that. Tiny Core, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do much with that. System Rescue, I'm pretty sure. I already used part of Magic, so. Well, you know what, I guess the only thing I'm actually interested in is trying one of these boot managers. Smart boot manager, that's the one. All right, we'll see if we can boot to a USB since I'm sitting here with it like this. See if it can see my USB. Boy, that's annoying. Make sure you want to take that hard drive out and throw it as far as you can. Somehow it got it got trying to read it. Now it won't quit trying to read it. Maybe if I would have hard shut it down or powered it off or something, you know, like unplugged it for a while, I would have quit. Maybe what I need to do to keep my sanity. This is not booting up very fast. I keep hoping that some tool I ran into would uh, tell me well if it can't contact the hard drive at all it's not going to tell you anything about it and I tried three good tools uh, I think that's enough for that hard drive business uh, I'm going to unplug the thing I think let's see back over here on my main machine and yeah I'm gonna unplug it You know, I think maybe I was mistaken all that bad noise, including the high pitch noise for fan when it either I fixed the original fan noise. Okay, now we just uh oh I lost my I don't have a keyboard. It probably won't come back either since I wasn't there. It's gonna try to boot. I can't even stop it. Okay, well I need to go switch my camera. It's booting. I wasn't thinking I booted it up before I was ready I need to switch my camera so I can be showing what's on the screen okay now we're good you know what I really ought to check my stream again it's been a long time now okay history Keep saying I'm going to quit, and then I don't. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh-oh. Oh, it's taking a long time to load. For a minute there, I thought my stream was down. And, well, no, three hours and 21 minutes, and we're still going strong. Okay. Okay. Well, my little, what was in my window was gone, though, the message I had in there. But the health is good, and everything's still there. Wonder why my, maybe it's just that it's not showing up, because the page wasn't loading really good. Okay, so we're on the right, no, we're not on the right camera. Yeah, we want the one that's shown in the monitor. Okay. <clears throat> Now we're going to have to, uh, I'm going to turn it off. Okay, that time I had to hold it in for around four seconds. I don't know why. But I uh, guess it depends on what state the operating system is in. It was booting. Something there. But what I was actually hoping for at this time was to use that one of those boot managers to get into uh, these other ones. Don't have really much to do, you know. Part of Magic, but I think it's an older version than what I was just using. Let's see, Smart Graphical Ranish. I wish it had plop. I can't remember which one I'd rather use, graphical boot manager or smart. Let's, it didn't boot real fast, so let's try the next one, graphical boot manager. I think I tried smart the first time. <clears throat> not sure. It's on the machine whether or not. The one, plop is the one that's really the best at uh, finding your USBs and booting to them. Read instructions, FAQ, read license, install. Oh, this is a whole different one. Uninstall. I don't want to install anything. Couldn't anyway. I don't have anything to install it to. That's one I used to use, though. I think that's the one I used to use, Gag. <laughs> yeah, it's just being kind of a normal, you know, loud fan machine now. I guess all that noise was coming from the hard drive. Well, that's good news, actually, because I was like, couldn't figure out what was wrong with that fan, but I swore, yeah, my little trick with the screwdriver didn't help me much, did it? I think I stuck it on the hard drive once. Well, it was loud, I think. I guess I didn't. My inspection skills didn't work, didn't serve me too well this time. Anyway, yeah, it's it's not whining or doing any of that crap now that the hard drive's unplugged. So yeah, it's a bad hard drive. <coughs> <coughs> now it's not so bad. Right now, what I'm looking for, uh, my mom's machine is a dual core AMD, and it's got Fedora 14, and it needs to be. No, it didn't boot. Uh, it needs to be updated, but uh, I want to have set up a machine for her to use while it's while I spend a week or two uh, upgrading and putting installing all her apps and doing all her job browser stuff and setting all her add-ins and all that. It usually takes me a while. I mean, I might be able to do it in about a day or two days, but usually it's two weeks. You know, if I really go at it, it's like it could take like a month or more. You know, really going into every little detail, but. She did not do any of it, but she's been using Fedora since Fedora 14. That's been several years now <clears throat> since it wasn't brand new. And I haven't had to worry about any viruses or any of that crap, you know. It's been great for me. <laughs> it, she she actually, she first she didn't even want to use it, you know. That was when she wanted to use XP, and it was really getting old anyway, and it wasn't going to last very long. And I finally talked her into it, and now she's content with it. <clears throat> I don't know if she realizes... I don't know why my CD's not showing up like it had been. <clears throat> it should. That blinking black cursor usually means you're not, it's not reading anything. Hey, you know what? It may be trying to 
You may be seeing that USB now and not working. But that USB is a boot stick. So if it was looking at it. Oh, there we go. Boot failure, yeah. I don't know why it's boot failing. Take my USB stick out and wait until I get my CD up. And then maybe I can put it in there. Okay. I think we're looking better already. I think it was the USB. Usually they don't, if they don't boot to USB, they don't see nothing. Yeah, there we go. I'll put it in a different slot this time too. Just in case that one got out of whack when I was hard shutting it down or something. Oh, what did you do? It already booted. <clears throat> I was jacking. I forgot you got to move. A, you got to go use the error keys and go to something pretty quick there. You don't have all that long. Some of them are like 15 to 30 seconds. That one must have been five, five or 10 seconds. So it's booting into slacks or something. Yep, slacks. <clears throat> no, it probably won't take too long. I guess I'll let it boot. We'll see. I'm gonna get me a little baby candy bar. I kept holding out because I was. One, I thought, well, I'm gonna get me a piece of. We have some cheesecake. I said, I'm gonna get me a piece of cheesecake, and then take a bath, and then eat supper after that. <laughs> but I've been messing around here too long. Looking for my trash can, couldn't find it. It's way behind me. I just got it out of the way. I think we have, might have an error here. Well, that's not what I wanted to boot anyway. <clears throat> Let's see if it'll be <coughs> right. <coughs> 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 Gotta pay attention this time. Okay. I don't know if Spark Boot Manager can do that. We'll see. Unless it has trouble booting on this machine. You never know what you try with these things. Boot film. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just trying stuff that's not working. Didn't get aggravating. I kept thinking of trying to bane it. Probably would have worked perfectly. There's the only two boot managers on this one. Boot, BKO is boot kernel.org. I don't know if that works, but you used to could boot to it and then boot to a live operating system, and then you could install it. That takes a long time. <clears throat> Puppy's pretty fast. We'll see if it boots up on here. It'll boot on a lot of stuff. Since I'm already in this CD, I think I'm going to have to say to myself, okay, give up that works or not I'm quit I mean like I've been saying I'm gonna do when I get tired you just start floundering around and making mistakes I, think I may be to that point already yeah and I could have even some of those I put in there you know I, I might have just slammed them in there not paid enough attention they might have been DVDs no I don't think I stuck a DVD in there 
because I'm in a CD drive. I'm not in a DVD drive. Because <clears throat> that one was acting funny and I didn't want to fool with it. It may take longer than I thought. <clears throat> Okay. Well, hard drive's bad. Um, I guess I've really kind of forgotten how long it takes to boot off a CD, too, because, you know, I was like, I went off and took a little break, and I came back, and uh, Party Magic wasn't through booting yet, you know, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's really slow. And now I remember, oh, yeah, CDs are, are slow. I'm just used to using USBs, and they're, they kind of read faster than a hard drive half most of the time. So, <clears throat> well, that's good to know that it's not super loud. Uh, I've got the case off, and it's not, you know, unbearable now. I think I'll put the, I mean, the cover. I think I'll put the cover on it while it's trying to boot. I think I'll give it a look. I don't want to. I don't want to switch cameras or anything because that'll get. To do that, I have to use my KVM switch and get off this machine. That would mess up uh, the CD here, finding the monitor, the keyboard, and the monitor, and all that stuff. So I got to leave that where it is. Where's my? All oh, my lights are over there. I was looking for my little lights. Uh, magnifying glasses with lights on them. <clears throat> anyway, I'm trying to see if I can. Oh, I know where the screw goes. It holds the video card in. Yeah, so with the cover on, <clears throat> get a decent, I think if I get a good hard drive in it, it won't be too bad. It's not that bad. Yeah, it makes a lot of difference. It's actually not a bad looking box, I don't think. <clears throat> I'll see what that other one is before I decide, but I may put this hard drive that I think is good that just isn't partitioned right. Looks like somebody started to begin to partition it for Windows and then didn't finish. It has like a boot partition that's probably empty or something because it didn't do anything. <clears throat> Either that or it's because that Pentium 3 couldn't even read it because it's so big. <clears throat> Usually, the only problem I have was, I can't remember because I really don't try putting bigger, you know, hard drives in a pen older and things like that, but like in a Pentium 4, I know they read 80 gig hard drives because that's what I had in my one I first one I built up but 80 gig hard drive and Windows XP in it <clears throat> and um, it really the only pro the only thing I had trouble is XP is limitations not the the BIOS because if you put Linux on them then they just boot um, cause I think it has to do with Grub Boot Manager but it'll you know Grub Boot Manager takes over and uh, you have no problems with it recognizing the full hard drive, you know, no matter how big it is <clears throat> in Linux. Yeah. Ever since way back, you know, I started with uh, Fedora 5 in 2005. So it's always been able to recognize the biggest hard drives I had during the day, you know, that I had. <clears throat> and uh, which was 80 gigs and then, you know, then like 120 and then 250 and the biggest one I've got now ever had is a five. Well, it's really a four and a half terabyte, but it's a USB drive that <clears throat> I bought just six or eight months ago. 
<coughs> for a backup drive. <coughs> but other drives are, you know, <coughs> I don't think I even have a 500 gigabyte hard, uh, hard drive in my machine. I think they're all like 250 gigabytes and smaller. <coughs> <coughs> well, isn't that something? <coughs> now my throat's quitting all of a sudden. <coughs> I was seemed okay until I had that chocolate. Uh, I'll go ahead and have a ricotta, uh, but I'm going to quit. I don't know what's going on with puppy here. It should have gone somewhere by now. They told me it wasn't going to work or do something. I'm tired of trying all this stuff and it not working. So I guess I, I hate, I like to leave on a note of something that worked instead of something that don't work, but I guess you can call this a cliffhanger. I'm going to have to quit with this and we'll come back and uh probably what i'll do is put that other hard drive in there and boot it back up to one of the versions of part of magic i'll try that newer version it might have uh, it may be the one that i was thinking of that had uh, team viewer on it already on it or VLC, vnc remote desktop already on it server so that i could look at it i remember one did uh might have been the newer actually we may not have anything newer than 6.0 I think that's what's on that CD. It is a CDRW, so hopefully it'll read that. It's, it's a CDRW drive, so I think it will. This is 6.6, .6, so yeah, I think that's the newest one I have. I think it's the last one they let you have for free. So yeah, uh, I might be able to get Team Viewer working on that or something, and then I can go forward with it probably do that before I start up that other machine I'll just leave this one on the table and figure out where to put my stuff well I may not be able to leave it on the table I may have to take it off the table because that's where most of my junk that's on my bed sits but anyway okay um, it's done I'm going to I guess I'll turn it off I uh, forgot about getting the CD out of it. Let's go ahead. Get that out of there. I think I got it just in time before it wouldn't let me get it out of there. And uh, turn it off. Get back over here. Guess we'll be one checking on my stream one last time. Well, that was one heck of an adventure with this thing. I really kind of thought there for a while I wasn't going to make it work, <clears throat> not without a new video card. Isn't that crazy? It took it. I mean, I did all that stuff and then taking it out after I straightened out those pins and everything. Took it out, looked it over, put it back, and it worked. That probably caused the system board, you know, to like reset. Um, I mean, I unplugged it during that time. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I had it unplugged when I when I straightened all that out and everything. I might have done it with it plugged in and forgot. But um, I think I had it unplugged. But anyway, I'm, you know, doing that, taking that thing out and unplugging, maybe the... Uh, the video card, you know, I'm unplugging it uh, completely. Maybe it allowed some more of the caps to drain or something a little bit more and cause it to be reset, and, you know, its processor to be reset and not see any more errors, you know, like, oh, dang, short, shut down, you know. Like, it probably has some protection in it that would shut it down when it had a short. Evidently, it didn't blow out. Of course, I don't know what what's on those pins. It's I doubt seriously they were both ground though. Uh, they could have been a two, you know, six volt and a twelve volt, or two twelve volts, or you know, I don't know. I don't know. I I think I actually never really knew what how many volt, you know, what kind of power. <coughs> well, that <coughs> that being an IDE, I think it's an IDE output. It's, well, your 12-volt plugs in, you know, to your 12-volt plug on your hard drive. <coughs> it's 
excuse me, <clears throat> on your hard drives. So that would probably be from three and a half to five volts because that's the only other choices in, in PCs, three and a half or five volts. So that's probably what is on those pins. So, but it, And sometimes you'll have a one pin with five volts, another one with three and a half, you know, and you'll have several different voltages all in a array there. But it could have been two of them touching, which wouldn't blow it out, but it might cause some crazy things, you know. Cause I would think if there was a ground and a positive touching like that, this hard, they were really just right on each other, just sitting there. <coughs> I would think it would short and burn something out in the board, or uh, and you might even see signs of arcing on the pins. And, <coughs> <coughs> and I didn't <coughs> see that. <coughs> okay. This just means you quit right this minute. <coughs> You're done. <coughs> okay. Well, this done, and I uh, <clears throat> don't think I have a have a camera that will point at me anymore. You see my leg down there, <clears throat> so uh, I was going to turn it towards me, but it's so close it would just be really bad. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, there's my side of me old. <clears throat> there I am. There's the side of my um, new old HP Pentium 4 machine. At least it's not another Celeron. It's got a little more power than a Celeron. I already forgot how many megahertz was it. Only 1.7 megahertz. That's crappy. <coughs> uh, gigahertz. Sorry. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. And next time I get on it, uh Probably tomorrow, I guess. I'll mess with it. And since I've messed up my schedule, I'm not going to be getting up early in the morning. I'll be going to bed early in the morning. <clears throat> I'll probably uh, work on these this weekend. Maybe I can get turned around in the next couple of days and get, actually work on my truck. Okay. Um, this is done. And uh, there we go. We'll talk to you later. All right, bye.